are you experiencing severe painful menstrual period every month during your cycle severe pain that you're unable to carry out your daily activities then this video might definitely be for you so hello guys what's up and welcome back once again to my channel this is everything health with nosdera in this channel we get to discuss different topics related to health and if you're seeing this face for the first time i am nurse chidera cynthia i'm a registered nurse registered midwife registered public health nurse and a bachelor of nursing science degree holder currently practicing here in nigeria if you're interested in this topic keep watching periods are not supposed to hurt terribly people experience cramps during periods but it shouldn't hurt to the extent that it affects your daily activities it stops you from leaving your house going to school going to work rolling on the floor in pain even passing out yes some people pass out during their periods because of pain if it gets to this extent then you need to go to the hospital and get it checked out there might be an underlying cause people are getting gaslighted in some hospitals when they complain about this monthly unbearable pain they tell them it's all in their head they are exaggerating they are being overly dramatic periods are supposed to hurt so today i'm going to have this discussion with you as your fellow woman not everyone experiences severe unbearable pain during their periods at least people like me don't it is normal to have cramping during your periods but the pain should not be unbearable to the extent that you have to be on analgesics pain relief drugs every month during your periods it is not okay you should be able to function normally Just just like every other day during your periods so if you go to the hospital and you're getting gaslighted on this go to another hospital until you get properly examined there's little awareness on this condition both from the patient side and the doctor's side sometimes so be your own advocate and make sure you get the help you need so now let's talk about this condition endometriosis about one in ten women all over the world suffers from this condition and there is more than hundred thousand cases per year in nigeria so endometriosis is a disorder in which the tissue similar to the tissue that lines the uterus we also call it endometrial tissue or uterine lining grows outside the uterus in places where it doesn't belong this tissue thickens breaks down and bleeds as period but the blood has no way to leave the body and it becomes trapped now let's keep the medical jargons one side and let me explain this in a layman's understanding the uterus which is the womb of a woman the inner lining of the uterus which is called the endometrium at a particular stage in your monthly cycle it thickens if you watch my videos well you must have heard me saying this multiple times it thickens and prepare itself as a bed where the fertilized egg will implant on and begin to develop as a baby but if fertilization does not occur in that particular cycle that endometrial tissue will break down it was thick before waiting for egg to implant on it so if there is no fertilization towards your period when your period is about to start what happens is that it will break down and then it will shed itself as period blood that is what period is now so this tissue that is supposed to grow become thick and then shed as period blood the deposits of it are found in other places outside that uterus where it is supposed to be sometimes it's found around the fallopian tubes it's found around the ovaries on the surface of the uterus and sometimes in other surrounding structures now what happens during your cycle when the endometrial wall is supposed to grow and become thick waiting for implantation to occur as it's growing those endometrial tissues found outside the uterus at the fallopian tube ovaries on other areas of the uterus they are also growing together with it they respond to the same hormone that is making the endometrial wall to become thick they respond to the same hormone and they also grow and become thick as well so now what happens when there is a drop in the hormone and the endometrial tissues breaks down and sheds itself as period this same endometrial tissue i told you that are found in other areas where they are not supposed to be they also respond to the drop in hormone and then they break down as well and sheds itself also 
as period but the difference here is that the endometrial tissue found where it is supposed to be in the uterine wall have an escape route which is the vagina the period comes out through the vagina as period as menses but those ones found at the ovaries fallopian tubes surface of the uterus have no escape routes they are there collected and this process keeps repeating every month let me put it this way they begin to irritate the structures and the surroundings where they are and this causes inflammation adhesion scar tissues and so many other things that can also affect fertility the ones in the ovaries can also be collected there in the ovary forming an endometrioma cyst or also called chocolate cyst so when these adhesions and scar tissues and all of that begins to form around the fallopian tubes the ovaries adhering the ovary to the uterine wall or blocking the fallopian tubes that is how endometriosis can cause infertility endometriosis can start from a person's first menstrual period and last until menopause there is no known cause of endometriosis there is no known way to prevent it there is no known permanent cure but its symptoms can be treated and managed with medicines and in some cases surgery now here are some of the symptoms of endometriosis it causes severe pain in the pelvis especially during periods that is why i said it is not okay to experience severe painful periods every month some people also experience pain during or after sex or or when using the bathroom some people also have trouble getting pregnant other symptoms include heavy bleeding during periods or between periods bloating nausea fatigue depression anxiety and so many others the symptoms are variable and broad meaning that sometimes your doctor may not easily diagnose it even the individuals with the symptoms may not be aware of the condition now how is this condition diagnosed a careful history of menstrual symptoms and chronic pelvic pain provides basis for suspecting endometriosis endometriosis can often present symptoms that mimics other conditions and this contributes to diagnostic delay so ovarian endometrioma adhesions and deep nodular forms of disease may require ultrasonography or magnetic resonance imaging that is MRI to detect it also histologic verification can also be useful in confirming diagnosis particularly for the most common superficial lesions now let's talk about treatment of endometriosis so the treatment of endometriosis varies based on the severity of the condition and whether pregnancy is desired there are medical treatments and surgical treatments a range of medications can help manage these conditions the medications include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that is the NSAIDs and analgesics painkillers like ibuprofen naprosine and the rest of them they can be used to manage the pain so other medications include hormonal medicines like contraceptives birth control they can also help alleviate the symptoms and we have hormonal drugs like pills IUDs that is intrauterine device implants injectables like depoprovera injections vaginal rings and patches these are all hormonal contraceptives that can also help alleviate the symptoms but these hormonal methods may not be suitable for those wanting to get pregnant because it can also affect ovulation that is why i said the treatment is based on the severity of the condition and whether pregnancy is desired and that is why you need to have the conversation with your doctor to choose the best treatment method for you we also have the surgical methods which may work better for you if you're trying to get pregnant so fertility medicines and procedures are sometimes used for those having difficulty getting pregnant due to endometriosis so surgery is sometimes used to remove the endometriosis lesions the adhesions the scar tissues and this may help improve your chances of getting pregnant without altering your hormones so treatments are based on individual preferences effectiveness side effects long-term safety costs and availability sometimes symptoms may reappear even after successful eradication so raising awareness can help people to be diagnosed early and early treatments can help slow or halt the natural 
natural progression of the disease and reduce the long-term symptoms. Success in reducing pain symptoms and increasing pregnancy rates through surgery depends on the extent of the disease. Therefore, treatment options for infertility due to endometriosis includes laparoscopic surgical removal of endometriosis, ovarian stimulation with intrauterine insemination, and IVF in vitro fertilization. So I'll end this video with this. Endometriosis has significant social, public health, and economic implications. It can decrease quality of life due to severe pain, fatigue, depression, anxiety, and infertility. Some individuals with this condition experience severe pain that prevents them from going to work or school. Also, painful sex due to endometriosis may lead to interruption or avoidance of intercourse. And this can affect the sexual health of the individual and their partners. So it is important to identify this condition earlier and manage the symptoms. So with this, we've come to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed watching, please give this video a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions and I'll be there to respond. Turn on your notification bell because I have more informative and educative videos coming your way on this channel. This is it for now. Stay tuned and see you in my next one. Bye.